this is the second video in the four part series of making this BJD doll. In this video, I'll be repainting the face now that the doll is all assembled and ready to go. Many different materials can be used to repaint dolls, but these are the ones that I've come to like and prefer after repainting several dolls over the past few years. If you'd like some more information about any of these supplies, feel free to leave a comment and I will have an answer to your questions. When I started making this doll and throughout the repaint process, I didn't really have a particular plan. Most of the time, I just like to jump in with whatever colors I like at the time and feel out the eyeshadow shape, plush, and so on as I go. I also gave this doll reddish brown eyebrows despite making a purple wig since I often tend to make red wigs for my dolls most of the time. I'll surely be making some more red wigs in the near future and if you'd like me to make a video on those go ahead and leave a comment about that as well. But without further ado, let's just jump right into this repaint. To start, I gather up all of my materials so that I'm not searching all over the house for them. The most important material that can't really be cheaped out on as I have found is the Mr. Super Clear sealant. I've tried matte sealers from other stores and brands like Hobby Lobby, and while they work just fine initially, I find that over time, the sealant breaks down and the doll's faces become sticky and tacky, which of course is not ideal. Mr. Super Clear is a tried and true for me at least. I also like to use makeup for my repaints, as long as it isn't cream-based eyeshadow. I like the color payout better, and it tends to be in more natural shades, aside from this vibrant James Charles palette that I just got recently, which I'm pretty excited about. Shadow after I sprayed my doll with Mr. Super Clear twice, since it's easy to erase the eyeshadow and play around with it. You can see that I was messing around with this first eye and testing what shape of eyeshadow I wanted the doll to have. I didn't really have a specific theme or look for this doll, I was just feeling out what I enjoyed for her, especially with these new vibrant colors to work with. built up as much color as I can with this layer of the eyeshadow and move on to the blush. I'm going a little more dramatic than maybe a real human would have, but I thought she would look sweet with a soft blush since I plan to give her some freckles later on. I also use a calmer tone to do some very subtle contouring and it helps to warm up the face to make her look a little bit more alive. I also added some blush to her collarbone and her upper chest, since this part of the doll will be seen more often. I like to wait to blush the entire body until I'm putting on tattoos or other details, since Mr. Super Clear is a little bit pricey and I don't want to waste materials spraying the entire doll when it probably won't be seen under clothing very often. Still on the same first layer of Mr. Super Clear, I start mapping out the eyebrows. I like to use the eyeshadow since it's really easy to erase and shape and it will be the undertone for drawing on the individual hairs later. I use multiple colors when I make the eyebrows to give it more dimension, which is a trick that I picked up from Pexjam. You can see what a difference a second layer makes in being able to build up 
More color in the eyeshadow of the doll here. Now I'm just drawing on the hairs of the eyebrows, which I think makes the doll look much more detailed. Again, I'm just using three different colors to add depth, drawing thin lines that flatten out towards the end of the eyebrow. Having portrait drawing experience definitely helps here to understand how the eyebrow hair should lay. Another little detail that I love to add to most of my dolls is little moles. It makes them seem more human to have little flaws, and I like to make the moles in the shape of Orion's belt. Just a random little trademark that I like to add. To make the freckles, I get a paintbrush with long bristles and water down the color that I want. Then I flick my finger over the end and it makes a bunch of tiny little paint dots that look more random and convincing like real flick freckles rather than drawing them on. It can be a little tricky to get the paint to not fling a stray blob here and there that does not look like a freckle or lands in the wrong place like the ears. So I just use a wet q-tip to quickly wipe away any defects before it has a chance to dry. One of my favorite parts of the repaint, which tends to also be the most challenging for me, is painting the lips. It's hard not to end up making them bigger and bigger and bigger every time you mess up just a little and need to even things out. I thought a nice deep purpley red lip color would be nice to go with the eyeshadow. And I love purple, so why not? Here, I'm just adding a little bit of a crease to make it look more like she's smiling softly, before adding one last coat to make the lips opaque. The second most challenging, of course, is adding the eyeliner. I know that this can be challenging for humans, let alone on a tiny doll scale. I'm sure other repainters feel the struggle, and I think this one turned out pretty good overall. Water down black paint and plenty of patience and going back and forth between each eye to make it even gets the job done. Lastly, I add the bottom lashes, trying really hard to make them soft and natural looking, which I always find to be a little bit difficult. I ended up giving her 3D lashes for the top lid off camera, since it adds a lot to the doll, even though it's pretty tricky to get them glued on just right. With that, the repaint is all finished up. Next, we seriously need to give this doll some eyes, which is what the next video in this series will be all about. In the next video, I'll be showing my process of making the eyes, printing, and painting them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.